Hey guys, Luke here. Welcome back to Season 3, Episode 7 on my Rugby League Life 3 West Tigers crew mode. Now this is actually my second take of doing this, so I should have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. So the first game, obviously you can tell on the screen right now, it's the West Tigers taking on the Cronulla Sharks. It is a home game for us, so I'm expecting a pretty good victory. And the second game is, a, is an away game against Manly at Brookvale. And is pissing down Rome, but we'll get to that when it happens. Now, looking at the Shark side, it is a pretty strong side. Um, they do have Parrot and Wateni Zalesniak on the wings. You got Lola here in the 5 8 position, Joel Thompson in the second row as well. And um, in the, the forwards, they got Penny Terrapo. Now, I can't remember exactly who has, um, you know, who played what season. Like, some of these guys could have been there last season. I know Lola here wasn't. I'm pretty sure about that one. But uh, right here, Lola here, the men we're just talking about, we actually get off to a brilliant start because he just leaves the ball for whatever reason. And then we end up throwing the ball into him for uh, an offside penalty. Now, usually we'd probably take the shot at two, but I decided to just go in for the kill. And right there, Alex Glenn comes up with a nice little short pass to Chris Lawrence, who was in the gap. And basically just doing what we haven't done in previous games with Alex Glenn, and that's um, actually throw the pass, just draw him in and throw the pass, where previously we'd been trying to throw the dummy and go through, which hasn't really worked out too well for us. But Lola here, here for the Sharks, breaks through a tackle, and thankfully, Kevin Aguama throws over uh, what I assume would be Sam Parrott, probably, on that wing. We throw him over the sideline, so that was quite good. Now, talked about Lola here briefly. He was someone who we did try to sign, and, and speaking of a signing, see, Tedesco just made a great run, but Jay Granville, who's come to us this year, uh, he picks up a try now. I'll talk about Granville just briefly. Um, he's someone who I wasn't really sure. I was thinking, man, have we made a... I mean, we made an error bringing him in. I mean, he's okay, but he's not like the Granville in real life. He hasn't got the speed out of dummy half. Like, uh, he's got the only attribute that he has from real life is that he can't play the whole game. Um, but yeah, it, like he, I don't know. He's kind of, he's kind, of, he's just seems like another hooker really. But he did sort of come alive this game, and you'll see throughout the game um, what exactly he does. But Lola here, that's who I was going to talk about properly as um, Ennis makes a break, and uh, he will be rounded up by Curtis Sirenen, and there was an offload, which Tedesco picks up, and it is halftime. We've got the lead. So now I'll finally talk about Lola here. He was someone who we did look at signing last year. We were con contemplating um, letting Sirenen move into the forwards. We decided to give him another year just because... Um, basically, the contract, the amounts that they wanted, and you see here, Nofa Luma makes a huge break. Uh, what well, wasn't even a break, just picked up the ball and just had space ahead of him. It's just, what can you do? It's, like, it's not like I swerved or anything. It literally just walked into space. Um, right here, another chance gone begging. Uh, it was a nice little offside, uh, offside, a nice little inside ball. Um, Sam Thide drew in the defenders. Uh, Tim Simona probably did the right thing. Um, Sam Thide right here didn't do the right thing. He's gone into um, Alex Glenn mode, where he just takes the tackle instead of um, doing what he should do, drawing and passing, but thankfully, Jake Granville right after that ends up scoring his second try, and that's what I mean by Jake Granville coming alive, those little darts out of dummy half, they are coming in to um, affect pretty well this game, uh, but yeah, Lola here, he wanted something like 500, 600,000 a year, which is crazy money, I think Tedesco um, is probably the only player who I'd you know, pay that amount of money for, um, and also I think the wingers are really expensive in this game for obvious reasons, they're overpowered, but I mean, when you consider Curtis Sirenen, who I think had the same sort of rating, I mean, they're a bit different plays in terms of Sirenen's a big power player, as Kevin Aguama goes in, he'll score right under the post, that was great work from our left-hand edge, this time Sam Thoday passing the ball, and Tim Simona as well, um, doing the right pass and that sort of stuff, and Kevin Aguama with his normal finish as usual, scoring a try, um, but yeah, Sirenen, you see he's kicking the goal. He, you know, he can kick the goals. He's just a, gr a great player for us. He's big, solid build, and um, he doesn't miss tackles, that sort of stuff. But Lola here's got that X factor about him. He's got that, um, you know, he's quite quick and all that sort of stuff. And I know he's very, very good in the game. But yeah, ratings-wise, I don't think he's that much better. Uh, as you're going to see, Cameron King's going to round up. Um, I think it was like Tim Robinson or someone. I don't know exactly who it was for the Sharks, but I think that might have been who it was. Now, a little pass there, and we cut back to the inside. And this is a great chance for us. We've uh, Kevin Aguam is going to go down the wing. You see Nathan Gardner coming in late. He does get contact with him, but it does look as though he did get the ball down. Now, that was brilliant work. That's just, once again, uh, I think I talked about it briefly with the Granville second try. You just got to go across and, you know, cut back on the inside. Just the change of direction kills teams in this game. If you're struggling to win games, cut back on the inside every time, you'll you'll win it. It's the same way uh, as, you know, when you threw one-on-one -on -one with a um, with a fullback, just fake to go one way, sort of start heading that way, and then turn and go the other. It's pretty simple stuff. It is... um quite overpowered, and it's not the funnest thing if you're really, really good at this game. I mean, you look 28 to 6. I can't say I was enjoying this this game a hell of a lot. I mean, I was enjoying it in terms of we're winning, but I really wish there was more competitive matches at this point. I mean, the only competitive match we've had so far has been the, Panth the Panthers game, where we ran them down. Did run them down pretty comfortably, but so far, 
not really much of a challenge this year. And I think that might be just due to the fact that we've got a really, really good side. Plus, I'm a lot, uh, a lot better at the game than previous years, uh, previous seasons, I should say. Anyways, Michael Ennis, he scored a late try. a late consolation try. But we did end up picking up a very, very comfortable win, 28-12. to James Tedesco, man of the match. You see, the completions were incredible from us. And it just looks at the Sharks. Like, they only had 10 completed sets, which... You know, that's, that goes down to them having ball, uh, poor ball security, but us having great pressure, great defense, and just not letting them have uh, opportunity with the ball, which is, you know, that, that's a positive for us. That is, that's great for us. Uh, now, moving on to the second game, Manly are usually a side that we have a little bit of trouble with. They seem to sort of cause a bit of havoc against us. I think they might have maybe not beat us, but I think we've gone to a golden point, maybe had a few one-point wins against them. But, um, yeah, I think definitely it was expecting a tough game, especially with um, it being... You know, such shitty weather. It's raining. Uh, it is at Brookvale Oval as well. So, Manly sort of in their element, you'd have to say. And, uh, you know, they've got a few weird signings. Dave Taylor's on the bench. Um, I think they've got Young Tottenham Petit. Young Tottenham appear on one wing. Um, I'm pretty sure Aiden Caesar's in the halves. Now, once again, a few of these players could have been there last season. I just haven't noticed. Um, I think Caesar was probably there last year for sure because Forum was at the Titans. Um, they definitely had... Forum was gone like after the first season, 100%. Bro, here, Matt Ballon creates a little bit of a line break here. And this is number two. He's going for the line. Alex Glenn with a great tackle around the legs there. It is Chase Blur who jumps into dummy half. And Cherry Evan comes up with a poor kick. And Elijah Taylor is going to pick it up. And he's going to race away. And he's not going to quite go the distance. But he does make a fair few meters there. And that was just absolute shithouse from um, Cherry Evan. Now, speaking of Cherry Evans, he usually plays very, very good for them against us. And he hasn't had a great start to the game. You saw he just threw the ball straight into us, which resulted in a repeat set. For, well, not repeat sex. We didn't even have the ball, but it did result in a line dropout. Unfortunately, straight from that line dropout, we give the ball away, and it was Tedesco who did um, round up the number 11. I don't know exactly who it was, but straight after that, you see Dover Nofaluma comes up with an intercept, and he's going to score another try. Um, him and Kevin Aguama on the wings there, lethal combination, and um, I'm just really, really happy that we have Nofaluma, and it is weird considering we played Pat Richards over him. Now, Pat Richards was a great player, but obviously we had Nofaluma waiting in the wings there, no pun intended, but um, yeah, it just shows the kind of depth that we've got, and you can let some of these, you know, big big names go. Pat Richards won a lot of money compared to Nofaluma, and we let him go because we knew Nofaluma was a talent, and we've been rewarded for letting that happen. Now, right here, I see David Clemmer has a, a huge break now. We took advantage of what was a initially very, very poor move from um, James Tedesco, but we sort of capitalized on them rushing up and um, just threw a little short pass, which resulted in Clemmer making a huge line break, and it was very risky because of the, the weather, but it paid off very, very well, and straight after that, Alex Glenn scored a try. As you can see, Curtis here in two from two as he kicked it from next to the post, pretty much, so um, you should expect him to be kicking those, although his uh, kicking boots still aren't exactly on, and <laughs> judging by that, either are his... Um, you know, his gloves for his hands or whatever. I don't even know if that's a proper saying. I kind of just met up on the spot. But um, number two there, making a break down the wing. It's not Peter Higu. I think it's probably um, probably Tottenham Apia down that wing. But uh, right here, the last play of the half, it does see David Moffaluma. He's going to die with the ball here. He is wrapped up by Jamie Bureau and the number two. Uh, basically, we just wanted to hit the edges. That's pretty much what you got to do. Lawrence had a fair bit of space to work with, but they did round it up. They, you know, they did close it down pretty quickly. We sort of got boxed in. And, you know, after that, you're not going to go anywhere. Now, right here, starting off the second half really, really well. That was a great little ball by um, Keith Galloway, I think it was. He threw a huge cutout pass. And then Kevin Aguama, he ends up with the ball here. Can he get to the line? He could possibly cut back inside in hindsight. We had, like, Granville or Griezmann. We had someone in support just there. I think it might have been Griezmann in hindsight. But, um... Yeah, we really should have taken advantage of that uh, that line break, but we didn't do that. And we get held up over the line there with Tim Simona. He did pretty well. Um, really should have just pressed the button and put the ball down. It was as simple as that. But thankfully, Marty Tapao, who has signed for Manly in real life, he crosses over the line. It was a huge palm. Um, that was really I really like those sort of tries, the ones with the big palms. And Marty Tapao, uh, he is kind of known for them in real life. So it's um, quite an accurate reflection on what really happens. Now, this is one of our first huge costly errors. Uh, and see, Steve Maddow making a lot of meters. Tedesco is getting... Uh, he was gaining on him, but we just dived a little bit too early now. Had we left at another 10 meters or so, we probably could have made a normal tackle on him, but we went for the spectacular tackle around the legs, the ones that look really cool, and it pretty much got a 100% uh, strike rate if you actually time it properly and, you know, actually make contact. They don't ever um, really, they don't bump, bump you off or anything like normal tackles, which I thought might happen if we went for a normal tackle, but unfortunately we didn't even um, make contact with him, so... 
you know, it w- probably would have been better if we went for the normal tackle in hindsight, but we didn't do that, and Steve Manai scored, and we had a few more blown chances. Now, the first Simbin I didn't actually show this game. I don't know if I mentioned it, but they did uh, have a Simbin, uh, Simbin player. I couldn't tell you who it was, because I didn't even see it when I was editing, um, but Rahi, I think it was Matt Ballon, who ended up um, getting Simbin. So that is uh, quite a costly error for uh, Manly. It really kind of killed any chance of getting back into the game, because when your hooker goes off uh, Simbin, not only is like your you know, you're down a player, but a key player in Matt Ballon being the hooker. And we're taking advantage of it here, scoring right before uh, full time, extending the lead to 22 to 6. Tim Simona is who um, who scored. He just took it around the fullback. Pretty simple stuff there. Just exposing um, the edges because when you hit the edges, when they've got a sim bin, there's obviously going to be, um, you know, they're obviously going to be short on a side. So that's exactly what we did. And it worked out quite well. And 24 to 6 is how the game will finish. This game, and what was quite surprising was Alex Glenn ended up picking up man of the match, which I was actually very, very happy about just due to the fact that, you know, second rolls and that don't generally um, pick up man of the match too often. But, I mean, looking at the, the results from the other games, you see we had a huge win, but we weren't the only ones who had huge wins. I mean, Storm had a huge win as well. Broncos, another good win for them. And it does leave us still uh, with a two-point advantage uh, over the rest of the competition. But the Dragons and the Broncos are hot in our heels, so we need to keep winning, and uh, we don't want to drop points. Now, anyways, that's where the video is going to end. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, at MrLukeMarty, face the page in the description below, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye, guys.